For most of the rest of section 1.4, we're going to be looking at acid-base equilibria. But before we do that, in this lecture, we're going to redefine what we mean by the terms acids and bases. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify acids, bases, conjugate acids and conjugate bases using the bronsted lowry definitions. You should also be able to explain what is meant by the term amphoteric. As you'll find out throughout the course of this section, many, although not all, acids and bases are involved in equilibrium reactions. Before we talk about the equilibrium reactions, however, there's one or two tweaks to our current understanding of acids and bases that I'd like to make. Starting off with the H plus ion. Now, as it says up here, H plus ions do not actually exist in aqueous environments. So to understand that, let's look what happens to an H plus ion when you have it beside a water molecule. The bonds in the water molecule are very poor. The oxygen being far more electronegative than the hydrogens. Furthermore, the oxygen has two non-bonding electron pairs. Now the attraction between this small positively charged ion and the negative part of the water molecule is too much for the hydrogen ion to, exist, to resist. So you actually get a data bond formed using the two of the oxygen's non-bonding electrons uh, with the H plus ion. forming this species, which is the hydronium ion, H3O plus aqueous. So in an aqueous environment, it's not actually H plus that's present, it's H3O plus that is present. Now, the hydronium ion behaves exactly like the mythical H plus ion, and so this tweet doesn't have any great change to our understanding of acids and bases. What we are going to change, however, is our definition of an acid and a base. At National 5 and higher, our definition of an acid was a solution which contains a higher concentration of hydrogen ions than pure water. But advanced higher, we're going to use something called the bronsted lowry definitions of acids and bases. So the bronsted lowry definition of an acid states that an acid is a some, something which donates protons. Let's look at this example. Well, we've got HCl and water, um, we produce our hydronium ion and the chloride ion. Now, what's donating the proton? The HCl is donating the proton to the water from the hydronium ion. So that means the HCl is the acid. For every acid, there's also something called the conjugate base, which is formed by the loss of a proton. So it's the bit that's left over once you've lost the proton. So when the HCl loses its proton, you're left with Cl minus. So the Cl minus, the chloride ion, in this case, is the conjugate base. Using the same theory, a base is something which accepts protons. So if we look at this example, uh, we've got ammonia here and water, and we're producing ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So what's accepted the proton? Well, the NH3 has accepted the proton from the NH4 plus ion. So that makes NH3 the base. And just like for every acid, you have a conjugate base. For every base, you have a conjugate acid formed. And the conjugate acid is the thing that's formed by the gain of the proton. So this is what we form by the gain of the proton. So the ammonium ion is a conjugate acid. So you just need to 
learn how to work out what's the acid, what's going to base, what's the base, what's going to get acid. However, the more surprising thing when using these uh, definitions is that, well, if we look at this equation, okay, the NHC has accepted a proton, so that's a base, but what donated the proton? The water donated the proton. So in this reaction, water is actually an acid. And the hydroxide ion is a conjugate base. It's what's left over after the water has donated the proton. And then if we look back at the first equation, the water here has accepted the proton. So in this equation, the water is a base because it's accepted a proton. And the hydronium ion is a conjugate acid. So you can't even just learn that such and such a thing is an acid and such and such a thing is a base. You have to look at the individual equation and work out what's donating the proton, that would be the acid, what's accepting the proton, that would be the base. Then work out the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. And as you can see, depending on the reaction, water can act as either an acid or a base. And it's not alone, it's not the only substance that can do this. And we have a special name for uh, substances which can act as an acid or a base. You see that they are amphoteric. Oops. So water is an example of an amphoteric substance because it can sometimes act as an acid and sometimes acts as a base. Okay, here's an equation here. Pause the tape and try and work out in this equation what's the acid, what's the conjugate base, what's the base, what's the conjugate acid. Okay, the acid. What's donating the proton? Well, H3BO3 is, ex is donating the proton to this substance here. So that H3BO3 is the acid, it's a proton donor. And what's left over after it's donated the proton is the conjugate base, which is this thing over here, H2BO3 minus. What's accepting the proton? CH3NH2 accepts the proton and the conjugate acid is what it turns into once it's accepted the proton which is CH3NH3+. Okay. Uh, you'll get a chance to practice some more of those questions in your next exercise file. So by now you should be able to identify acids, bases, conjugate acids and conjugate bases using the Bronsted-Lowry definitions. And you should also be able to explain what is meant by the term amphoteric.